Hello everyone. So welcome to episode 78 of Te Tarik with Wallet. I am excited because this is a follow up from one of my previous episodes. As you as you know, a couple of episodes uh, ago, I had the Straits Times editor, Mr. Jimmy Ho, and uh, there was a lot of reaction to it, uh, to that particular interview. And one of those who reacted publicly was uh, Professor Bertha Hansen is one of Singapore's most significant, uh, most prominent media critics. And she also DM me. Uh, she had a, a lot of comments about it. So I thought, okay, let's uh, let's discuss it publicly. And she, uh, the previous time I had her on, I thoroughly enjoyed that discussion. Uh, this time, I think it's going to be uh, a more cordial conversation, I think. But yes. Hi, hi. I made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we did it this time yeah, I mean, without any yeah, um, yeah, yeah. after much trepidation and anyhow trying okay <laughs> no thank you so much for agreeing uh, to do this you're very generous with uh with your time with me so i appreciate no that so let's let's get let's get right to it right so uh you wrote a review of that interview uh on Dura. public hello <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's publicly available, right? So what, what was your, I don't know, what were your sentiments? What was your concern? Or is it disappointment with that interview? And uh, it could be on the way I did the interview as well, you know? So anything uh, that you had uh, with the interview? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What, well, basically, frankly speaking, after the first two questions, uh, I had to stop. <laughs> I had to stop, okay. stop listening to the whole thing. I was just so flabbergasted, you know, by what, by what, what was said, lah. Uh, I mean, not just that there's no censorship. I don't know whether, you know, he's in Singapore or somewhere else or another planet or whatever. And then worse, there's no self-censorship as well. It's, it's just not, not credible. It's very different from the way I've experienced it. Unless you tell me that over the past few years, things have changed drastically in the Singapore landscape. So, you know, I... So if you start with someone saying that no such thing, then you know you sort of you sort of can tell where the rest is gonna go, uh, But anyway, I did go back lah. I did go back and and watch the thing again uh, to the end. Mm. Right. Okay. So yeah, let's explore it a little. I think I every person I've spoken to shares the same sentiments. Like they couldn't uh, because for us this is not really the Singapore we know. Because even on a daily basis, there's a lot of self censorship, right? But we don't we don't come from it. Uh, through the through the journalistic mm -hmm. angle, right? So you know more about that, okay. right? And but I've read, I've read, you know, Obi Marcus and so on, and editors explicitly saying that there was some forms of censorship. Yeah. So maybe he was defining it yeah. in a, a different way. Okay. And I can accept that. Uh, maybe he's talking about censorship as you know, I send my work to somebody and then they go over and then they send it back and then we publish. No, that doesn't happen. Uh, right. So so basically, but then again, you know. It is so clear for any journalist, right? There will be newsmakers who will put pressure on you. Yeah. It need not be official. It could be companies and advertisers and whatever. And, will, and I mean, that's why you have PR firms, right? I mean, newsmakers want to look good. If they mm. think something bad is going to come out, they will say, hey, hello, can you like, you know, don't do this and don't do that, don't do this. And it all depends on whether you have the energy, right? Or, you know, to say no. Uh, I will carry on doing it. So, you know, so basically what he's saying is that this doesn't happen or if it does, you know, then uh, they always say no. Lah. Uh, but, you know, if mm. you think there's no censorship and also no self-censorship, it becomes quite unbelievable. You know, I mean, you know, if you tell me no censorship, and but yellow, of course, we censor ourselves. Okay, something like that. I can say, yeah, you know, mm. um, but he also makes this distinction between censorship, self-censorship and editing. Uh, now, I know people always have a problem, you know, they, when, we, when we say we edit, they say you censor, right? Mm -hmm. I, let me make this clear. When you edit, you have the reader in mind. You know, the story must be shaped in a way that the reader can understand. Uh, you add info to it, you organize it better, you make it flow logically. So at the end of the day, you have the reader in mind. When you self-censor, you're saving your own skin. Okay? So, 
he are uh, doing it because oh i don't want to get into trouble can i afford this you know uh what if people whatever then i will have to do this do that so that's self-censorship you know so of course we do editing huh? we do editing with the reader in mind when self-censorship is i don't want to get into trouble and frankly speaking self-censorship is there all the time uh, uh mm. in practically i mean basically you just you just don't want to you know overstep some boundaries uh, and then you get into trouble and then you you have to defend yourself and you know so you basically so it all depends you see where your principles lie how far can you go where you can say i'm perfectly legitimate saying this and this is why you know and at the end of the day it's down to facts uh. what is mm. your thing you know everything is based on facts if i have the facts you may dislike how i write it you may hate the thing but you cannot quibble with me because i have the facts you know so mm. that is has always been that should be the principle of journalism mm. Mm. so so let's let's explore that a little uh thank you thank you for that that's useful so but let's say there's there's this modes of uh, pressure mm. that are applied mm. especially on your journalist i can imagine it's hard it's hard for them to even just stick to the facts right because they're thinking about their futures and careers mm. and so on uh you, you don't think that's valid or i think basically then what you're saying is that the newsmakers and i suppose we're talking about the biggest newsmaker is very thin skin lah huh? ah they don't <laughs> don't think that you know the integrity of journalism is worth preserving ah. not even for them for their own objectives you know right so right. so um i think essentially the culture of the newsroom and the culture set from the top from the editors down is is what's needed you know are we going to roll over and die every time there's a bit of a pressure do we say you know try our best to push back you know if we are firm in our reporting uh, and you know that's a very important caveat you know i mean whatever you do you must fall back on your notebook you know uh, what is in there you know what what are the facts that you have uh, so you know if these are the facts then you cannot argue i mean you may grumble with me whatever but i'm firm, firm ground you know so it's whether i got stomach for it or not <laughs> so right. that's the way i i know journalism that's the way i practice i must always be able to justify whatever i write based on what my facts are so 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 mm. confirm from your experience there is room for editors and senior journalists to actually push back on that and just just take and you you mentioned you have the stomach for it so you have to take maybe some consequences scolding okay. i don't know what what it looks okay. like but there is some There's pushback some basically room. i don't know about you know the current 4g or whatever you know but there's always been room you know so basically you say your piece you no know? i say my piece you know sometimes we've managed to persuade you you know sometimes you refuse to take it then i have to think do i want to go ahead Uh, if i go ahead then how right uh is this a battle i want to win or is this a battle i can afford to lose you know of course scolding is one thing lah yeah journalists we get scolded all the time lah never mind lah you know really really you know so when we govern school school lah you know so this but the thing is you need to be able to safeguard yourself as a professional you know i'm a, i am the professional not you you know you are the newsmaker Uh, so you have to leave me to do the job in a way that i think the reader your audience uh, will be most interested in or mo- most affected by you know so I, i it is for me to take a look at what you've said and see one whether you make sense you know whether it's boring like hell and then if so how can i make you a little more entertaining maybe i will try and think about it you know or i will put up a point which i think will induce people to read you know Yeah so 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 there is room there is room huh I mean right. you don't find it why huh la. okay I mean right, right. LKY just said you know please don't you are not supposed to run anything on ministerial salaries and oh you keep quiet you know unless it comes from the government we don't say a word you no know, he doesn't like it when we read stories on JBJ you know we know so it all depends on how far you want to go huh? to butt heads or whatever but I must say he understood you know the need for quality journalism he he wanted it raised 
you know, something more insightful. So, you know, so that was the good the good thing about him. I mean, Go Chok Tong was the same. Uh, he was very concerned about values, you know. So I remember we got wet like crazy because we did one piece on lots of cars and kids drive. Uh, so, you know, so I like, oh, I, this, uh, so I said, like, oh, okay, shit. No, so this is a policy of the, the politics of envy part. Huh? And of course, we all know where Obi Marcus came from under his time too, isn't it? So you see, there are OB markers. So you also have to operate within the OB markers, right? Self-censorship means that uh, you pull yourself even further from the notes. Don't even want to touch the OB markers. Right. You don't know where it is anyway. Uh, right, I mean, right. So <clears throat> do you want to test it? Or do you want to take the, the safe route? How can you tell me there's no self-censorship? Of mm. course there must be, right? Huh? right. Oh, or you want to describe this as editing. I'm not so sure. Yeah. So, so, Professor Chiran Jot, somebody we both know, another media critic, and uh, says that there uh, is a great distinction yeah. you made between editing Thank you. because that's for the public, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and self censorship if one's own skin. So, if if I could understand this, so it's really about intent, is it? So the outcome could be the same, but it's about intent. It's how the editor intended it. No, or the outcome is vastly different. As well. I think it's quite different. I mean, when you edit. You know, you edit, you don't think about you, you know, about yourself, you know. You think about the reader and whether you can justify everything you've said, mm. you know. So I I don't think so. So you try and put yourself out like, okay, sometimes, you know, you might get into trouble, right? And then what you do is, now you have, you need the skill, the language skill, your vocab, uh, the way you present the story to put it across like, uh, so how you do it, how you write it, how you report it, that becomes very important. Uh, and that takes skill. It takes a lot of skill, you know, how to be as inoffensive la, as possible. <laughs> right. So we all, I think right. all those of us who are senior, uh, I mean, older or whatever in the business, we all have learned to dance. Uh, uh, learned to, right. You know, I would say the relationship between the government uh, and the media in Singapore, it's a bit like a slow dance, you know. You know, you, you slow dance, right? You slow, slow down. You know? So you have to hold, you no? Know? Uh, I hold you one side, I, then, you know, hold your hand. Then the question is, how close you want to go? You want to go and yeah. you touch, uh? hello? You want to get molested, uh? you know? Or how far you want to go, you know? You want to go until that far. I mean, you look that ridiculous, right? You know? So it, it, we do this slow dance, you know? And then, you know, but just to, to say music, like, so that's the way the relationship is like, like how close, how far apart, you know, is it arm's length or is it, you know, so that's, that's how I see the relationship. Right. So uh, I guess, uh, Bertha, we, the, the standard response to that, right, for, for senior journalists, uh, people who have been there and people who, who are maybe not really in tune with, with the past, you know, they, they would say, oh, but it's the same during you guys, also, your time also, no. right? There was a lot of censorship and so on. So you really think there is a substantive difference? There is a substantive difference. And I'm not talking in terms of political constraints or whatever. No, I'm talking about your professional practices. You know, I mean, I've always told young journalists when I was there, uh, that, hey, hello, 95% of the time, you can do your job professionally. Uh, so you go and focus on the 95% of the time. You know, so you know how to justify what you write. You know how to justify your angle. You have got your facts. Know that you can do it professionally. But the trouble is, I'm seeing the principles, you know, not even being followed. You know, I mean, you don't even talk to me about, you know, angling. Uh. I mean, you talk to me about, you know, who, what, where, when, how, why. Uh. Uh, you know, is it all there? You talk to me about somebody tells you something, did you go and verify? No, you have unnamed Facebook posters being, you know, Quoted. I mean, have you verified the fella? You know, no. You know, you, you tell me, so, you know, when somebody gives you something to write, do I see value added that is beyond what I can now access on the internet because there's a press release? I don't see much of that. So, you know, so I, I, I always say that, you know, some things you have to do, uh, because politically, can me help, lah, huh? But there are things that you can do and do it right, you know. And, and once you master those skills, you take it the other side as well.
you know. So you do your, your professional work properly. Because the professional work, you can apply to any instance where there's a political argument, no? I don't know. Make sense not? <laughs> no, it makes a lot of sense i mean I, I think you are the subject matter expert i won't quibble with you on this so uh so uh, another subject matter expert right, is uh prof george as i said and he he said we have all learned to dance but has the music and choreography changed ah, okay true yeah hey hello carrie you just talk to you <laughs> la. <laughs> you should just come <laughs> has the music and choreography changed yeah man i think so uh Look, I have not been in the system for some time, you know. So I'm judging everything based on the output. Uh, so I read, and then I have to make the assessment based on what I see and what journalists tell me, lah. Uh, and uh, the music has changed uh, for a few reasons, lah. You know, it's basically, basically, how do I say this, ah? Uh? Basically, the leadership doesn't seem to me to be very confident. Uh, about themselves so that's one uh. and the other thing is um is uh singapore has, has got to a stage uh, where we, we we always say live and let live you know not 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 so worried about standards or whatever or we get so cynical that you say you see i told you so you know that's why i don't really no no no, no. so it's a very strange country so uh and you can see it happening, la, the, the falling in line part. I mean, just look at what he said about government press releases. For goodness sake, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. You know, so, so there are plenty of government press releases. By the way, since when has there not been plenty of government press releases? You know, mm. but you know, not all government press releases need to be run. Uh, that's something. Some of them are nonsense, okay? Some of them are just motherhood statements, you know? So you have to make a judgment call. It can't simply be that the government gives us, therefore, it must be good and therefore it must be told. It's not the case. The government is also like any newsmaker. You know, it, it wants to look good, you know. So, so basically when he said that, you know, oh yeah, we could have done it better, we, you know, whatever, whatever. The fact is you do it very badly. It's not a question of whether you can do better. Right. I don't think any reader who follows the Straits Times for a long time would say that the quality has gone up. I, I would say it's declined quite quite a lot. Mm. Mm. So uh, this, this is a question from Arun who said, uh, do you think young journalists within the newsrooms have a lot of agency to, to change or push back or should the pressure come from outside, like critics like yourself and Shiran and others? You know, I think young journalists don't know what they can do. They don't even know what they don't know you know so i've had strange questions from journeys like when i tell them some things they, they say like ha huh? you can do that ah? oh you can mm. is that I say, yeah why not oh they won't get angry i said angry angry la you know, <laughs> when we become so thin skin you know and sometimes it, it's reached a stage where you know, we can ask this question ah. and i said what's wrong asking the question they may not like it so <laughs> I, mean, I mean you answer right. that, you know so you know um i see a lot more of that where they don't know that there are some things that can be done that like you don't know that you can waylay someone uh and ask to speak to him you know you don't know that you can ambush uh, a minister somewhere and ask him a question rather than he tell you please come for a doorstop interview you know you they don't know all these things you know so i think when they hear hear me speak they're like hello why, why, why like that? Why like that? And then they, they say that it's not done. So you see, it's a lot of cultural thing, right? It's not done. Yeah, yeah so that institutional memory gets lost over the years. So Agreed. that's... And uh, it's hard to think. Yeah. But the whole middle rung of people who can tell you stories, huh? Huh? and who can tell you how to react huh? to situations and all that, that's, I think, not there. Lah. Quite. Right, okay. Hmm. So if we could put meat to the bones, right? I mean, this is a question from uh, former minister, Professor Yaakov uh, Ibrahim, and he says... Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends on the to topic. So he said, I wish I, a few people uh, DM uh, and ask this question as well, a, a version of it at least. How should the Singapore media report about Gaza? Because for instance, because oh. this is 
this is so sensitive. Yeah. yeah. Politically yeah. sensitive, but societally it's sensitive. What is the role of the media here? How should they be reporting oh, think, such? A, you know, ah, uh, uh, I don't. I all through my career, I don't do foreign news. Yeah. But when there's foreign news emanating from from Singapore, you know, that's so government's position on that. I always report in full. You know. Uh, so I would report the government's position faithfully and you know, do as the government says for very simple reasons. See, I don't know enough about what the government thinks is happening or wants to do. I always say, uh, like bilateral relations, uh, hey, I'm not going to be responsible for water getting cut off. Uh. <laughs> you know? So there's you know, some things that may not be within my competence. You know? So on, on, this, on this point, basically, I will follow the government's lead. So I'm. Oh, so, so for you personally, your red lines, uh, quote unquote, is basically foreign, yeah. foreign policy yeah. and foreign. Yeah. So basically, I, I don't, I wouldn't know how. You see what, what the consequences? You see what, what, what the government is planning, like, on the bilateral or regional or whatever front. You get me? Right. So right. it's so you know, and they don't tell. You know, you know, some things they don't want to tell, right? So you don't know how. So you just so, stick on. Mm. Hey, can we get out of so, Israel or not? I, I don't okay. really follow it very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, so, I mean, that was uh, Prof. Yaakov's question. So, so I guess not, not specifically about uh, uh, Gaza or Israel, but so on foreign policy, mm. right? Uh, would you say that that should be the only the journalists or should society also think uh, think like that? Like, when it comes to foreign policy, we fall in line. It's only domestic politics that we, we really question. Uh, let, you, let me ask you this, okay? When you yeah. see columns and commentaries in the Straits Times, they are by their foreign correspondents in those foreign countries, right? Do you see local yeah. commentaries on local politics? No, mm. right? Uh, mm. It's very odd. Uh, we are confident enough to be able to say something about somebody else's politics in some right, right. case. That yeah. would hurt. we write about lifestyle. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, really. I, so that's why when, when people want to go into this thing about how you do foreign news, you know, thought leadership or whatever, I say, Halamak, please, la, can we just get basics right first? You know? right. Can we things right? You know? we do, we, this is our backyard. I mean, this is our home turf. Are we doing this properly? You know, you know so right. I, would, I would view it, get the basics right. And I'm, I, I'm upset because those things are not right. They're not followed. So, you know, you just see uh, Singapore. Wow, we got Taylor Swift uh, coming in. Uh, uh, financial hub. Everybody wants to locate here. Da, 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 da. And then you look at the media we have. You know, it doesn't quite befit our status, does it? Uh, and, mm. you know, so so I, I wouldn't even go that far into like foreign policy and whether you want to take lines from the government. I just say whatever has happened, to your standard operating procedures, you know, and I don't even know whether what you write is real, you know, and you don't right. think there's a need to attribute or you don't see the need to get somebody who is not, you know, uh, you know, Spider Man or something, you know, hashtag or whatever, you know, or you know, so I, I think, can we get all that right first before we right. jump foreign news, you know? So it's a, so it's it's a very very basic thing for me lah. Okay, okay. So, so just so you mentioned, does it start to, you... to you know, low level? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So yeah. I think it makes sense. like so when it comes no so when it comes to local politics, that's our bread and butter. We should be getting local news right. right? Yes. And it's just going back to politics and and interesting because you said that uh, early on you said about politicians uh, being thin-skinned mm. and they should be more thick-skinned. Mm. But you also mentioned journalists should be more thick-skinned yeah. as well. And you think that's a problem? Okay. Journalists, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, journalists. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I think it's a it's part of this whole wave, you know, of social media and, you know, having a telephone, you know, like now talking to you right there, right? You know, yeah. you can't... I can't believe it when I was talking to some journalism undergrads. And they tell me that one of the things they don't know how to do is talk to a stranger. So, I mean, so, so you have to talk through email or, you know, message you or whatever, and then, you know, you have this kind of situation. I'm like, 
Oh my goodness, yeah. you cannot go and talk to a stranger. Yeah. So how? You know, so so it's a. I think it's it's something that isn't just happening in journalism, lah. Huh? I think yeah, yeah. And people are, are no more comfortable. I mean, for goodness sake, if I tell you I will, I'm willing to do an interview, right? Would a journalist say, okay, I send you the questions, then you take your time and answer? <laughs> you, you don't, you see? You know, I said, uh, you don't come and see me, yeah? <laughs> you know? So, you know, it's, so that has all gotten a bit, and it's gone backwards, yeah? Mm. Mm. Okay. Right. So, um, there, there's a question by, by Alfred, right? But may, we, we can understand why editors or journalists wouldn't want to go against the government, right? Because the idea is that the government is this behemoth and there are a lot of pot potential consequences, right? Or uh, you, you disagree, like, you know, you won't be promoted or whatever it is. And so there are actual consequences, right? Like we cannot... Or do you think it's exaggerated in our minds? This well, is? basically, people have been moved sideways, you know, or, you know, maybe moved out. You know, so I mean, basically, but not without a lot of, a lot of pushback, lah. From what I I gather, you know, I mean, you must fight to save yourself, right? You know, or, or you expect your editors to fight for you, so, right? So, uh, so we, of course that happens, you know. So maybe you are you were colonist, and then son, you can do some back end job or get posted to the library or something, you know. So so sometimes it's seen as saving you a bit la ah, maybe later can take you out cold storage and put you back in la ah. so, right. so but sometimes it's just seen as you should have just you know stood up for me la, ah. i'm lucky i've had bosses who always stood up for me you know and try to mend bridges with you know when i've burned one you know they try and see how to mend it so those those are i mean that's the kind of editor i appreciate la, when you know when they do things like that so they're willing to stick up for you because they think you are right as well or maybe they think you're wrong, but at least with the newspaker, they make noise, huh? and then they come back and whack you, but never mind. Huh? So, you know, uh, mm. the leadership is very important. Huh? The leadership mm. is very important. You know, would your boss take risks for you? For example, you know, I've had people tell me that, you know, I want to do this, or I want to write this, but this fellow calls up and says, don't. I say, no, 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 I'm going to write, I'm going to write. Then he says, uh, uh, then I talk to your boss, right? I talk to the, talk to the boss, the boss says, do it. So what can you do, right? Uh, with not much explanation. So she says, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. This chin chai thing uh, is really very obvious. It's like anything can, uh, uh, just, just, just do it, uh, just get it out. So it's actually, it's actually very, very distressing. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, you want to make things better uh, and and when I see even if if the small things cannot get done right now, do you really expect to do the big ones very really well? I, I don't think so, no. You know? Right. So what if I and I really don't know the answer to this, so I'm just I'm just asking. So what if uh, the, the journalists say that oh the pressures that we are under today is very different from during your time, right? Because now we are we are competing with social media side, so you have to get it out very fast, as in the urgency like uh Previously, you know, it's the next day thing. But now you have to uh, produce within the hour and therefore, definitely, you'll see more mistakes and so on that will correct later. Uh, is that, do you think that's valid or do you think but that's still all, a lame excuse? It all depends on what is the editorial policy. Do you want to get be first or do you want to be right? I mean, it's really, you know, you, you have to make up your mind, right? I mean, if you want to be first, then you tell people like, hey, sorry, lah, but, you know, I want it out first. And you have to think whether being first is better for your integrity than being right. But late, huh? so 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 you know, there's a lot of judgments that have to be made, uh, and sometimes those judgments have to be made clear even before the doing, you know, so that everybody's on the same page. Uh, like say, when it comes to this kind of news, you know, we have to get it right, and it's okay. Somebody else can go and run the thing first. It doesn't matter. We get it right. I mean, it's like in the old days we talked about the BBC and the C and CNN. Uh, so CNN will run first, you know, and then we will wait for the VPC because we, we think that the level of checking right. is better. See, so we don't mind. You're a bit late. Never mind. Yeah. You know, so you have to make up your mind. What do you want to be? Who do you want to serve? You know, there was something interesting he said about social media. Oh, no, not social media. About, you know, the competitors, as you say, right? Other, other media, you know, you fight to get your stuff out, right? 
he said there was room for other media uh, in Singapore that you know you can have niches and all that no there is not much room uh, I mean if there is room for different media to operate according to niche straight stats will need taxpayers money right you know I mean if a big guy like you need taxpayers money the small fella how uh, and they yeah. run on the shoestring budget you know so if you get the taxpayers money then you must be expected to do a lot better a lot uh, so you would say so now with the uh media trust so you actually your expectations are much higher than than a few years ago and i'm i well basically my expectations have been dashed lah huh? so basically you know clearly if you are clg uh public trust right uh you know and when i mean when it was first announced they said you'll be like you know other people have done it you know the guardian you know, scott trust tampa bay times you know, this sort of thing wow so exciting right uh, because you see what else they do right besides like just turning right and then then you have snt december 2021 yeah have you seen anything any questions about their finances i mean you know i mean in the old days sph at least uh, shareholders can ask questions no i can ask you how much is your operating revenue how much you take to run the newsroom uh? you have to answer no. now uh, you don't have to that's so odd isn't it because they have to hold agms uh? i mean i read i read the law uh but i don't know what they've done but they have to lah uh? they don't have to give an annual report don't have to but you know if you are public trust uh, do you think you just do it you know so in we have we have this strange situation where you know i have a public trust i'm funded by taxpayers uh, and then you're responsible only to your commercial fellows who, who put ads and the government <laughs> i mean and then so the government and you, you know i mean now i think uh you know, each other's embrace no not quite so dancing anymore no. so it's it's basically they you know so basically the government says you have to do all these things and therefore you do whether you do or not is between the government and you how can it be I, it is so odd can you imagine how it was far more transparent before you know and now it's not as transparent i don't even know why the articles of association are sealed you know mm. so what what's what's the what's the solution what's the way out but transparent lah. i mean how, how how difficult is that you know i mean you talk about transparency i for the life of me i cannot understand why there is not a full mass head of who is in charge of what in the print newspaper i you know no i mean do you are you really think your print leader you know never mind lah, you know you go online find out huh? hello it is so disrespectful you know so if you want to be transparent can you at least show me your mass head of who's in charge of what because then i'll know who to call if i want something or if i want to complain i want to have some response but i don't have how can that be you know people fight to get their names you know on the mass head so so right. transparency like what what relationship is that right so so uh i wanted to just circle back to to the interview right so uh if, in spite of uh, your uh, criticisms of of the way uh, jamie did the interview right so could you could you understand at least like what else could a straight times editor say right when if i ask him is there censorship oh. what else what, what was the answer here i mean what's wrong with telling the truth <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean no seriously i'll be very honest yes of course there is of course, people will, will want us to do this, not to do this. There have been times when I had to, and I don't not tell you because I'm so ashamed or whatever, you know, and there's something I fight, I fought back. What's wrong with saying that? I, I don't see a problem there at all. I mean, other editors have said it openly, you know. So, so I don't know why. That's why, you know, why he started on this basis, you know. And to talk about no self-censorship is actually even more astounding. It's more astounding yeah I, I, for many singaporeans i guess because a lot of us self-censor in our own daily lives so. <laughs> yeah 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 I mean, if, if people can even think that some questions will get into trouble my god what's yeah, yeah. more the answer <laughs> yeah yeah okay so, so so yeah i guess i guess 
uh, not not in his defense or anything he can speak for himself mm. uh, but i suppose his definition of censorship was probably different to what i had in mind and maybe what uh, what you have in mind as well so so basta let's say tomorrow the minister of communication and information calls you right and say we need you to help us out help us out in some capacity right help us out with straight times i don't know mm. some ed- editor or full time whatever it is right so would you say But yes and say yes I this say, is a i would say to the person it's not your business i mean what are you doing you are going around scouting for people you the government scouting for editors hello what are you doing you know you must be mad you know you should you know let the newsroom organize and lead itself you know but as you as don't so even you you can ask me a question like that i really i'm so flabbergasted that mps are asking ministers question about you know the the our newspapers right right so, right, right 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 it's now become like oh suspect and already you know so i mean if right. a person calls me i'll say hello nothing to do with you please go away you know wow you can let you know some other editors know that or whoever's on the transport or whatever or, you know call me lah huh? but why are you calling me for goodness sake you know i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry probably not what you want no no <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, that's that's a, that's an insight. So okay. So so you. Uh, so for you, there must be some distance. Uh, and I think I think that's useful. So so let's say the Straits Times thing calls calls you and say, you know what? Uh, we disagree with you on some things, but some of your criticisms, critics are pointed enough. So we wanna we wanna work with you. Will I tell you, you something. Do- okay. Uh, I haven't been called at all. Yeah. And I did ask to go back. Okay. I didn't- oh capacity maybe to train you know or you know part-time or whatever and the answer was they don't need any more people or any more trainers so your question is moot <laughs> okay. oh thank you for that i i mean i i genuinely didn't know that okay so um someone else asked why do you single out straight times i mean other media outlets in singapore also have have their own flaws but your criticisms oh. Mostly or almost entirely affected towards Straits Times. Well, I come from there, lah. That's one. So of course, you know, there's a. I feel for it also, lah. You get me when you when you see something uh, that goes wrong or whatever, you feel also, you know. Uh, so one thing, right? Uh, also, I think I concern the Straits Times because, as you said, in your interview with with Jamie, you know, it's something that's so important in everybody's lives. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah, Yeah, so if it permeates everybody's lives, that it must need the biggest oversight, you know, or the greatest number of checks. So that's why I concentrate on it. It's not to say that everybody else is so much better, no. I think some 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 of the other outlets are better in some areas than others. Huh? The Straits Times actually suffers from beyond everything else, but uh, which it has always suffered from is the fact that its audience is so broad. You know, so you know, you know, you know I mean, how do you write for someone who's eight years old, someone who's eighty years old? Right. You, it, that's so hard, you know. So it's so basically you have to come down to wondering who your audience is. It's, it's very simple to say my audience is Singapore. You know, <laughs> hello, excuse me, that's not good enough, right? You can see my audience is Singapore in terms of foreign policy, yeah, but you know, on local news, how? So it's it's very hard. So who do you write for? Huh? So that's uh something. I mean, I saw. I think I solved the problem when when I became new editor. I just told the journeys the topics that we are topics. Uh, I have to be so broad. Topics we are interested in are those that will affect a household in a four or five room flat with a uh, uh, working parents, one working parent, uh, school going children, and an elderly person somewhere they have to support. So you know. So if the the topics ah uh, would be would. Would no yeah. fall is there and bit is worth reporting. So it's so it's very hard. Mm. Rather be a tabloid, fantastic. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah no, it's easier, right? Easier. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, so this this question by Fahima, uh, is censorship even effective in a time when alternative media and citizens' social media content are uncensored anyway? And I think this is the biggest problem, uh, or one of the biggest problems, right? Because people see that, hey, online people are saying other things, right? It's like ground sentiment is different. And then when you read, uh, the, the mainstream media is different, right? So it does seem like that has the potential to undercut um, and I think I asked Jamie whether uh, one of the ways to do uh, to enhance Straits Times credibility is to publish content which are also critical of the government. Um, uh, I think. I, I, what, what what do you think? No, I, I'm afraid I, I don't quite understand your your question. You're saying that because the other alternative areas and you know social media are very critical, therefore the Straits Times and the mainstream media look look like they what they have to do something is it no or what? oh so they, so they look uh, i guess the question I'm, I'm reading the question and uh, qu uh the question here so i guess the question is asking whether that makes straight times even less credible uh because if people see that oh online there's a different sort of hmm. sentiment but in mainstream media, you, public sentiment what is it that the mainstream media has that everybody else doesn't have huh one is resources it's a very big deal you know online media have to piggyback yeah. on the report right. of mainstream media. So mainstream media must realize that its USP is the fact that it's got a crew and a crew that is supposed to do this kind of reporting work, you know, and and there's nothing that will beat that, you know. If you come out with a story with a lot of information, you know, I mean, basically, you know, if, if somebody else comes out and, you know, based on what little information, just whack, 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 what's, what's, what's the credibility there? So you have to use what you've been given, you know. That's why I, I, I totally lament this idea that there's so few local commentaries by the, by the journalists, you know. So so it's like outsource, no, to academics. You know? Maybe you also, ah, huh? no, outsource <laughs> to write about local stuff, you know. So, but, you know, if you are a journalist, you should be privy to more information than you let on, you know, for whatever reason, you know some things that you picked up here and there or whatever or you know somebody told you something you couldn't quite fit it in to a new story or whatever you know a bit more huh? yeah. and uh so you write a commentary because we, you are a bit more expert lah, you know than anybody else you know i mean some of the i see the academics writing i mean they're based on published info you know yeah. so if you publish info and you got half a brain you can probably you know come up with the same thing seriously you know you can come up with the same thing you know, so I, I think it's such a waste, you know, so you must, right. the role of the journalists of mainstream media, you know, must be a lot more, you know, it, you've got to give me insight, you give me information, uh, you have to filter stuff for me, yes, you, you have to, because the world is so complicated, I don't have a sense of what's, what's going on, or what, what's important, you know, sometimes when I, I still read e-paper, uh, I mean, I have print, but I, I because, it's supposed to tell me what is important today or yesterday, you know. But, you know, if you go online, frankly, everything is... You know, nobody has done any thinking for me. Nah? Uh, I know Jamie says that whether you're in the lead, lead opinion or not. Nah? But, you know, you yeah. to, it comes down to what is the role of the journalist. You know, if you're not going to make some decisions and just let it all hang out, then, you know, why do we need you? You, you might as well have a MCI putting out government press releases, right? Uh, and they have the resources even better, right? So you, you must see your role. What is your role? That's that's the most important thing. I hope that makes sense. Mm. Probably don't. No, you do. <laughs> no, you do. Uh, you definitely do. And and uh, I think it's, it's good to have a, a senior journalist uh, uh, explain that to us. So what, what, what do you think about the mainstream middle thing? Because I thought that was quite a fascinating middle. part of... Yeah. Of you. I tell you, if that represents the mainstream middle, I am very sad for the mainstream middle <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, it's I, I I don't even want to go there. You know, I mean, seriously, I don't want to go there. You know, uh, okay. but what about the concept? The concept about protecting this uh, this middle ground. Do you think that, in theory, okay. is what us should be doing? It should like, be. At... and by the way, my ex my ex website is called the middle ground. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Indeed. reason yeah. I do that is because not because it's because you want to give some 
reason rational thinking to some so to the news mm -hmm. you know don't try and go so left or so right or so off base huh? you you want to be able to focus on what the, the the people in the middle are worried about what they're thinking about uh, you don't go off one track one that is that is the part where yes you have to protect the middle but you don't protect the middle by repeating and not reporting i mean you're doing a lot of repeating you know not reporting you know you need to reporting because some things the middle is too 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 tired or too you know too busy uh yeah, to go and look at aspects of the news i mean sometimes these days uh i read the news uh, it's like doing a treasure hunt no i have to start and see okay where's the gem here gem here oh okay this is interesting I mean, come on you know so so when he when he says that the competition is for readers time i agree in fact that uh the readers time thing was in our my time and uh, before all these other media that was a key competitor right uh you know but so what do you do then you know you you have time against people and then therefore that my editors were very clear that you don't take the readers time for granted that means you know you write sharp you know short if possible uh you basically get to the nub of the matter you don't nya, 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 because that means that you you think readers a lot of time you know so you've got to give them the news you know i think Lee Kuan Yew and all that they understood all that you know that mm. you can't like fla, 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 you know you know newsmaker is happy because i got to play but yeah hello you're not red lah. Mm. so you know mm. also so you know so at the end of the day it comes down to this what is journalism what is the role of the journalist and in singapore how do you play that role and i always say if you fall back on the professional principles and practices you should be okay but you need people at the top who will say okay we'll do it this way i will see what i can do you know and i will i will see whether i can out argue mm. right so that's that's a good segue so to this question uh, by uh, Phoebe, we were taught, and I'm quoting her, we were taught in the year of MassCom that news media is not the fourth estate, but a tool for national Ooh, development. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, what, what is your question? <laughs> so the question sorry, the question, uh, Phoebe, is do you think that has bred, this, this culture has bred a ge ge generation of journalists that feel the government just controls? Um, mm. But 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 you has always said that the media is a tool, a partner in nation building, right? So it's not it's not new, right? Okay, it's the word you use, tool. Are you supposed yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. This, uh, the, the question is tool, but uh, I guess like when you use partner in nation yeah. building. Right? Is it a partner yeah. or you know, so I don't think I mean I would resent being a tool of anybody, right? Uh and a tool means that I, I use this tool for my purpose, right? And, you know, and I'm not too, I'm a partner, you know, you know, if you tell me, uh, you know, I think this is what you should do, then I'm also able to say, I think actually it should not be done or it should be done this way. Or maybe you should go and do right. this. You know, a partnership is a partnership. It cannot be an equal partnership. Yeah, of course. So, so, so you know, so we, you know, media probably gives in more like, uh, at, at great. I mean, we sweat a lot. Huh? I mean, we have to do these things. Uh, but, you know, it, it cannot be a, a tool in that way. And by the way, the national development agenda, I think MESCOMs better change it. We are past that already. Really? I mean, what national development? You know, that was, you know, when Lee Kuan Yew was alive. Lah, huh? But now, what are we aiming to be? We are aiming to be an exceptional country. You know, surely you don't call it national development. Uh, you want you want to raise, yeah, you want to raise civic, you know, civic consciousness. You want to make citizens aware that they have a part to play. You know, there's all other things coming to come into play. You know, so so I think that narrative. I mean, okay, you may say some bits on national development sounds like he should be flats. Like, that's the problem. <laughs> so so, but if you think of it in terms of like social compact, right? Yeah. Go together, right? Making sure people have a stake here, all that. Yeah, that's that's some things that you must do, uh, and how to do that? Not by repeating 
what government directives and missives and you know meandering lectures are, but by reporting what is happening on the ground, that's how you build social compacts, you know, and then you tell people what's happening, and then you know you tell people will get okay. Some people get upset, but so hello if if nobody's upset, how how do you expect journalists to work? Come on, you know some things will be upset. The question is whether it's true, you know. So you know, it, it's, it may be upsetting to you, but the thing is, I didn't make it up. I didn't fabricate it, or whatever. It's true. So you know, so that that social compact must be there, you know. I'm very troubled also because this is sorry your earlier question now uh, is that you see where do you get your local news from? Most of the time, you have to read the Straits Times. I know a lot of people say I don't, and I don't, I don't. I think it's their loss, okay. Uh, because whatever it is, I, you do need information. Uh, I agree, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do need information, you know. But of course, now you have to, when you have the information, you have to do more with it. Lah. I mean, you have to like, you know, think through the thing, you know, rather than just read because, you know, because there's not much thinking going on. So you have to think through it. But you, st you need to read it. So that's why, uh, why I focus so much on the flagship. Huh? The flagship has to rise to the occasion mm. right so thank you uh, that was that was very clear so there's this question by monica uh, you've previously questioned why important topics or issues are only brought up in parliament mm -hmm. was it easier to touch information in your yeah. time and what has changed what has changed the government's management of information has changed definitely i oh, mean you talk oh, about it, uh, yeah. this different orchestra entirely okay so basically <laughs> It's become like a pattern that if you want information, you have to be an MP, go to ask me in Parliament. Uh, and then I will give you the answer when I'm in Parliament. You know, so basically what they've done really is cut out the role of journalists, you know. That's what's been happening. And I, I, I cannot, I cannot tahan this, really. I mean, sometimes something happens and then you wait for one, three weeks or whatever, or one month, and then suddenly you hear something. So, you know, this is not, transparency or accountability i know people will say they need time they need time hello excuse me it's a small country i thought you were very effective i thought you were very efficient surely you can answer some of these basic questions what is wrong why do you need the sanctity or safety or safe haven of parliament to say things and then therefore that is the be all and, and all the discussion it can be so so but in in your time you mean to say that you could just contact most journalists contacted MPs personally and you'll get an answer. I mean, now it's like not a done thing. You know, I mean, go and talk to a minister, la. don't talk about MP. Ah. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you go run to them, meet the people sessions or, or, or whatever, you know. Sometimes it doesn't re doesn't have a, 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 a story. But, you know, it's just good to know, you know, it's called contact building, la, mm. right? You build up mm. your, your, your sources, you know, that somebody you can turn to for some insight. Like, hey, why is he saying something like that? Okay, tell me what's what's going on. No, sometimes it can't be reported. That's why I say there's always room for good journalists to write commentaries. You see, so so yeah, and you know, and and I think previously they were far better at holding press conferences, far better. They they, they felt the need, you know, that I must explain myself. They got and they explained themselves. Now they put on Facebook. <laughs> Okay, never mind. But, you know, they go, they have to explain themselves and take questions. So that was mm. common in the past. Right. But but this uh, this varies amongst ministers also, right? Some ministers, are, uh, maybe some of the more senior ones, are quite comfortable with media appearances and so on. And some you rarely see. So, or, or do you think this is a whole of government thing? Or do you think is, this is really it's a whole of government thing? Oh, yeah. You think it's a whole of government, okay. Yeah, it's a whole of government thing where, you know, so the, the information control and dissemination of information is quite different. It's quite much tighter now. Yeah. Mm. Right, okay. Thank you so much. So let's, sorry, I already went 10 yeah. minutes over time. This is about yeah. So just, let's try to end on a positive note. Oh, okay. So, yes. <laughs> so because, I mean, I, you and I agree that uh, straight times is still very important mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. lens and there's no way getting around that and I think I also said I ended my interview with Jamie saying that it's not the worst thing if people still criticize you you know I think the the day that people don't criticize straight times you're 
you're irrelevant already, right? So, but what, what is one thing that you would, just if it could be one thing that you would, uh, you want to tell the government, you want to tell the Straits Times that this is what you need to do to ensure that the Straits Times becomes credible and it will benefit yeah, from the Straits Times. A, a more way out idea, which may not be extremely uplifting. Huh? <laughs> you know, that, that 900 million, you know, I mean, I, I think the Straits Times is, has, has, has declined so precipitously that, you know, the government might want to think about letting other players have a hold of that 900 million and see what they can do with it. Um, wow. Um, well, that that's quite revolutionary. It's revolutionary, but you know, but basically, hello, you, you pick all these people, you do all these things, but you know, you raise people's expectations and what are you bothered with? Oh, have we gone digital yet? Ah, lama! You know, surely content is the most important thing. You know, content right. is the most important thing. But nobody talks about content. Yeah, nobody wants to touch it. Yeah, it's taboo. So, you know, I, I need, you know, so, you know, if some smaller player or whatever wants to come in and, and you know, see if they can take some of that space, help them. Because as I said, it's not true that, you know, the scape, the landscape can accommodate all, all sorts of people. Cannot. Cannot. Yeah. So why should you get all the money? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So sorry, yeah, not very positive or not very uh, uplifting. Mm. You want something? All right. No. No, 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 I don't. I just want the truth, you know, and this is why I enjoy having you on. And, and that was really insightful. And I really hope I mean, when I, you know, uh, nobody likes to be criticised, right? Mm. That's just human nature. But I think when, I hope when journalists, editors, the government read, read your interventions, uh, I do I do hope that uh, they think, okay, uh, maybe you don't have to like everything, but there's something useful there. No, right? I also and, like and to think that. that I'm not <laughs> and, <out. laughs> I, and what your sense? I'm sure you are being read very closely, right? I mean, because you're an important voice. So your sense is, do you see some of these things being implemented and so on? Like some of the things you said online? On like, journalism. Like journalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, no, sometimes I, I, I don't know lah. And this is a too arrogant for me to say it is, you know? So sometimes so, I say, hey, hello, what's the, f the next follow-up should be, you know, this, 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 and suddenly I see it appear and it's very gratifying lah. Right. You know, but right. Right. I can't say it's because of what, what happened, you know. I mean, there are many things I think should be changed and sometimes it just doesn't get changed. So I don't know, but I can't tell, I can't tell. Yeah. Right. So when some things get followed up upon, you know, whatever, they say, wow, okay, good. I'm very happy, ah. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> right. Professor Hanson, thank oh, you hey, so I'm much. Professor, go stop. <laughs> I'm no longer in the university. Professor. I am just... <laughs> yeah. Miss so, yeah. so yeah. no, I really get it, and I appreciate your voice. I hope you continue doing uh, what you do. Thank you for agreeing okay. to come on. Bye. Thanks, Walid. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. Have